reopen on Varys, typing an email. He whacks his logo and signature on it and is about to click send but gets interrupted. His employee gives him a status update on Danny. Varys tells Aegon he's posted about him on the internet, so don't be surprised if you get a fan base. Tyrion tells Danny that maybe they should monitor Varys' social media accounts. She decides the best thing to do is deplatform him completely. Fucking chuck another eunuch on the Barbie. Wormsy goes through Missandei's possessions and throws them away. Danny is becoming the overly attached girlfriend meme of Westeros. Aegon breaks up with her using his eyes. She says, I'm breaking up with you anyway. I'm the one who breaks up with wankers. Arya and the Hound try to guess the password to enter King's Landing. Hail Hydra, says the Hound. Well, how the fuck did you guess that? Cersei reckons she's an Avenger, doesn't she? Access granted. Oh, oh, God damn it, Jamie! why couldn't you check Google Maps to see if the King's Road was congested? After dobbing on Varys for treason, Tyrion decides to commit treason. He's booked a hotel in Essos for House Lannister. And if you could get Cersei to surrender the city, that would be great. Or else Danny will roast it. Are you fucking kidding? It's game day and the Golden Company finally has some work to do. Cersei arrives. She's got a corporate box with a sweet view of the action. Let us near the corporate box, yell the common folk. Don't make us fucking sit in the cheap seats. Jamie's like, I've got a golden hand. I've got a golden hand. Nah, shit. Euron is letting a trainee use the scorpion. It's fair dinkum, not the best time for it. You don't let a junior do all the work when you know it's a busy day. Can you guys hear a helicopter or is it a plane? No, it's a dragon! The Golden Company gets fucked on. If only they had their elephants. Every member of the Dothraki used a one-up after the Battle of Winterfell. What is this, a castle for ants? Oh, this is an absolute thrashing. Kyburn delivers the half time stats to Cersei. She says go out and tell them to give 110%. They look pretty gassed. Drogon yells surrender and there it is. There it is. Yep. That's a surrender. Surrender confirmed. Well done lads. You did the right thing. Hit the showers, grab a Thai green chicken curry and go bend the knee. The final siren rings. Tyrion can relax. <laughs> uh, well done Danny. Fair play. I reckon you'll get some new Instagram followers and friends. Not too many civilian casualties from what I saw. Where is she going? Just park the dragon. Park it. No one wants to play anymore. It's like a game of Monopoly. You dominated to the point it's no longer fun. So just park the dragon. Those guys surrendered. What are you doing? What are you? These are civilians. That building doesn't need to be demolished. Turn the barbecue off. Turn it and why'd you kill Varys? Why? Wormsy? Wormsy, no! No, they're turning to the dark side! This dickhead is starting to rape Sheilas! Put your cock away! Stop it! Oh, it's Aegon or Jono. This is more of a good bloke Jono action. Yeah, he's back to being Jono. Euron and Jamie are having a game of UFC. Kingslayer is the undisputed middleweight champion. The Hound says you're old enough to have sex, so you're old enough to throw out that immature kill list. Don't live a life of revenge. Kyburn reckons it's a good idea to get between the mountain and the hound. Cersei is like, okay, you boys play nice. I'm going to see what's happening downstairs. Maybe we have a few soldiers left. Fuck me dead. This is the greatest fight day ever. Look at that sexy motherfucker. God, God. Overall, Jono and Davos are like, let's go somewhere else. Arya becomes a medic. Jamie and Cersei become a pancake. House Clegane exits the game. And a horse says, yo, WTF just happened. Why is there so much violence in the world? Let's go for a ride and have a think about that. That's matter. That's what some people say. Just sit on your hands and ignore it, hoping it all goes away. It's matter, that's what some people say. Political loss from counting the cross will kill any cause for change. I hope I deserve this. Truly, I do. I hope I'm wrong. I feel like a nervous little bitch for another week in a row saying I loved this episode. I think the positives really outweigh the negatives. I know a lot of people don't want to hear that at the moment, but I think they do. The direction by Miguel Sapochnik, aka Sapo, 
is more on point for me in this episode than it was in his other one, The Long Night. Um, yeah, I think he's in Golden Battle of the Bastards form with this one. Some of the shots and the action set pieces had me on the edge of my seat. In fact, I couldn't sit. I was pacing around. It was intense and powerful. I had to pause it and go chuck a piss. And the tone is bang on with what Game of Thrones is about. I think when you consider the big picture, the writers and directors have nailed George Martin's tone and messaging. If you truly want to be a book wanker about this, and, and look at the book material we have to date, the tone is on point. It's very anti-war. It is about power and greed and needless deaths. It's about good blokes, bad blokes, good sheilers, shit sheilers. I don't think the character continuity is that bad in this episode. At times, throughout the season, characters do get underutilized and underserved. It's an issue with an ensemble cast. I, I don't know how you can totally get around it, but I don't think their decision making is that unbelievable in this one. Danny has wanted to be a conqueror and a ruler since season two. This goal alone has always made me nervous. She toppled cities, altered cultures, and imposed her will onto them at times. Morally, we have been able to side with her a lot. Slavery is bullshit, absolutely, but nonetheless, there's negatives to conquering, and the show has explored that. I don't need any more build up with her character, is what I'm saying. She's walked the line and lives up to that, that, that fucking quip of flipping a coin to know if a Targaryen is mad or not. She's been written 50-50 for a long time. This is also the first time she's returned to the place where her father was killed and her and Viserys was sent into exile. We know that backstory. I reckon all that shit is going through her head right here. Amelia Clarke smashes it with the acting. She smashes it. Anyway, she wants to rule with fear. She's accomplished that. It's just fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. It would be good if Master Yoda told her that. Varys' character is incredible the more you think about it. I reckon he was trying to poison Danny using this little girl. He doesn't have an interest in what she's eating because he cares. He gave up on her mental state in the last episode. He tried talking honestly to her. He said she's not listening, so from his POV, the next step is to assassinate her. We'll try again, Sabna. This is why Tyrion reports him, and yeah, I reckon he was close to achieving it. She's just too depressed to eat anything. He almost protected the realm in my head. Poison is a woman's weapon. Yes. Women, cravens, and eunuchs. Did you know that Lord Varys is a eunuch? Ugh, R.I.P. Varys. R.I.P. to Harry Strickland as well from the Golden Company. He died just trying to make sure his company never broke a contract. That's honourable. You know, that's honourable. R.I.P. to Kyburn. Fucking hilarious. R.I.P. The Hound. The Mountain. R.I.P. Cersei. Jamie. Just R.I.P. to a lot of dickheads in this one. Yeah, look, uh, this was a great little scene between Sandor and Arya here. Good little scene between Jamie and Tyrion. Jono probably has been too much of a passenger this season, but I expect that could change in the final episode. In a way, that is powerful too. Good people finding themselves on the wrong side because they've become complacent. How much would that happen with soldiers during wars on Earth? Quite a bit, I reckon. Hands. Are we the baddies? <laughs> I'm proud of Euron for getting the best piece of dialogue he's ever gotten, thinking he killed Jamie. It sums up his delusion and ego nicely. Jamie going back and forth to Cersei so many times in a roundabout way does have character continuity. I can't bring myself to be frustrated about it. I got my anger out about it back in 2014. In which case, why spend hundreds of book pages and hours of TV gradually turning Jamie into a likeable bloke to have him be an utter cunt again? I like that they pushed a kid out of a tower in season one and then they died being crushed by a tower. I'm fine with Cersei being humanized. She doesn't have to go out in a gory fashion. 
We have seen a fetus get stabbed before. It's not that cool. Cersei has done psychotic things, but she's been humanized before too. Admitting she loved Robbo once and he never loved her is one of my favorite humane Game of Thrones scenes ever. The walk of shame was humanizing. Having her die in a gory manner means jack shit to the big picture. At the end of the day, Game of Thrones is doing what it's always done making us angry when things don't go the way we want. Ultimately, I end up respecting that. You can argue that the way they're letting us down is not as smooth as the first four seasons. To an extent, I do agree. Maybe 10 episodes in season seven and eight would have been better. Yet in this instance, with this episode, I think it adds up nicely and I love that it's not about clean cut heroes and villains and that it shows the cost to human life when a bunch of dickheads go to war. That's what season 8 episode 5 The Bells is about. The worthlessness of revenge on scales small and large and the wastefulness of it all. It's